Hi guys. Well, I'm back. Um, sorry it's been a little while. I've been kind of busy. I'm going to do a real little short video here. Uh, I was requested for this video. And it's going to talk about checking voltages. Um, I don't really have a, a radio at, at the time that I could have put out here on the bench. Besides that, it's easier to look through the schematic. We're going to look at a couple of schematics and explain some things. But uh, right off the bat, these are, uh, well, basically what we're going to be looking at is a couple radios. And they're um, transformerless. They have no transformer. And uh, basically, uh, they wire the filaments in series uh, to make up for the line voltage and get uh, uh, filament voltage correct. But what we're going to talk about, uh, there's two different um, ways uh, or designs when it comes to uh, transformerless equipment. One is what they call a hot chassis, and that's where the uh, one side of the line, the, the plug, the line that comes in, will actually directly connect to the chassis and then the other side goes through the rectifier and then on through the radio and in those radios when you're checking voltages you know plate voltage screen voltages and things of that nature you actually you connect your negative lead from your meter right to the chassis any convenient place that you can fasten to the chassis and go about checking your voltages well, there's another way or another design of doing this where the chassis floats. In other words, the line does not connect in any way, shape, or form to the chassis itself. So uh, the power line will come in, one side will go uh, act as B minus, and the other side will go through the rectifier. And the, the schematic will denote this and let you know if it's a hot chassis or not. And one way of doing it is um, I'll try to see if I can zoom in a little bit here on this. Hopefully you can see this. This camera is still my old camera and it's not really the best in the world. I'm working on a new one. But they'll show something like this and they'll say... Um, the one ground symbol denotes chassis and the other one denotes B minus. Now you notice in this it's showing a capacitor and a resistor connecting between those two. That's basically there to make sure if you had the chassis fully floating and no connection whatsoever, it becomes acting like a, an antenna. Not only can it pick up noise from the outside world, but it can pick up interference from inside the radio itself, from the chassis. So, uh, you know, all these components ride fairly close underneath that chassis. Uh, they can start capacitive coupling in one spot and back or uh, feeding that to another spot in the radio. So you have to tie the chassis to ground, but not in such a way that you're going to uh, make the chassis hot where it can be dangerous. So what they do is they'll always will have a capacitor sometimes they'll have a resistor it'll be a high value resistor such as this one is 220k the other radio we'll look at has a 300 and I believe uh, 330k but there are some that only has a capacitor here now if you was to tie your voltmeter negative to the chassis ground in one of these type of radios where the chassis floats and go about measuring your B plus you know plate voltage on the different tubes such like here well let's look at the path that it's going to have to take you know you're going to have your positive lead connected here but your ground lead is going to be connected here so it has to go through that resistor and then they'll come out here this point this B minus is the same thing as right here by the switch which is same as all the other B minus uh, points in the radio 
But the point is, it's taking, and you're measuring that voltage, through an extra resistor in line. Now, depending on your meter, depending on how much current's in the circuit, how much, meter, how much your meter loads, and several other factors, this will actually read a lower voltage than what you really got because you're measuring a voltage drop that will be showing up on this resistor here. So you can do this, just remember that your voltages will probably be a little bit lower. How much will be determined more or less about uh, meter loading, uh, current in the circuit, and several other factors. Now if it's a radio that only has a capacitor in here, and some of them do, that's all they've got for uh, tying the chassis to ground to keep it from uh, acting as an antenna. If it only has a capacitor in here, and that capacitor is good, whether it's not leaking at all, and it's the old one, or you've replaced it more likely, then when you measure this, you're, only, you're not really going to measure much of anything. You might pick up a little bit of the ripple that's in your DC. Um, you remember these are half wave rectified usually. Um, they do have a couple filter caps and stuff, but there'll still be a little bit of ripple on that DC. And you might pick it up, but it's going to be, you know, real small amount value of voltage. So then you might think that you have no B+. Plus. So the point is you need to locate your B-. minus. Now one great place is the negative of your electrolytic caps is a good place to look. Um, the other thing too is, is just look at your tubes. You know how they wired. Uh, if we look at these we got the audio outputs going through 150 ohm resistor that then goes to B minus or circuit ground. So you can go on that side and tie there. The other tube here, the 12AB6, the detector first audio, well its cathode goes directly to ground or B minus the circuit ground. So there's another tie point that you could tie on to. So you, you locate those or the negatives of the electrolytics uh, in the radio, any one of those places is a good place to tie on to for your uh, hooking your negative lead up. Remember these are all tied together since it's a floating chassis. They're not tied to the chassis, they're tied by a wire. They'll actually run wire through there and that's the, the circuit ground. Probably black but don't hold me to that because Companies use all different kinds of colors, but uh, all you got to do is just look at your schematic and you can find good, you know, I, I would probably either pick this or the, or the electrolytics as a good point because these are easy to find and of course that's easy to find, you know, you can find V3, 12 AV6, pin 2 is connected to chassis or uh, not chassis, but uh, B minus or circuit ground. <coughs> now, like I said, I'll look, show you another radio here and uh, try to do this without making it too thick. Now, it's going to probably flicker a little bit because this is on my, uh, I don't have a printout of this, but it's on my uh, screen, computer monitor here. And let's see here. All right. Now hopefully you can see that um, the little screen that's on this camera is kind of hard for me to tell. But here's B minus. Now uh, one thing of note is you notice um, on Sam's. Let's see if I can kind of get that in there a little bit. Their little uh, ground here for chassis looks like a comb and then this looks like an upside down triangle for B minus which is reverse of what Sam's or uh, Riders has got here this actually is improper uh, technically this should be held for the chassis ground for a ground symbol um, it's supposed to kind of resemble 
It's also used for earth ground. It's supposed to kind of resemble like a flat plane and the little lines underneath just kind of shows like Sorry about that. The batteries went dead in the camera. Uh, I believe where I left off at we was talking about I was just kind of explaining that this is really should show for the chassis and these grounds here should be uh, circuit ground so they should be turned around. Sam's actually when I showed that one um, was correct but it doesn't matter. Now one other thing I want to point out this this radio has a selenium rectifier in it this is actually the proper symbol for selenium rectifier because they're actually multiples of diodes connected together they're not just a single diode each one of those plates is a diode so when you got um, got these seleniums each plate here actually is it's a diode a separate diode and if you want to get a general idea a good selenium one that hasn't really aged tremendously uh, it's not really getting real hot it's still in good shape pretty much about two volts is dropped across each one of those plates so uh, this one here has about has six plates so it'd be six twelve uh, six times two would be twelve volts completely drop across this if it's good just a little side note but anyway despite the ground symbols they use this is B minus it tells you it's B minus now the chassis is floating this is chassis right here and if I uh, move around you can um, see it it tells you right here yeah okay I think you can see these let me kind of zoom in just a little bit here. Right. Take this just a little bit. Okay, denotes chassis, denotes B minus. So we come up here. So the negative of the can electrolytic naturally is going to be minus. But here, the these circuits these two components the resistor and the capacitor is going to the chassis now this lead runs back down to the B minus this is connecting the chassis so it's not fully floating this keeps it uh, so that the the signal has uh, you know it won't uh, interfere or cause active an antenna or anything so this ties it off right here that's what this capacitor and resistor is doing. In this case, they're using a 330K resistor. So if you was measuring your B plus, then your return path, if you hook to the chassis, would go through this resistor and back to B minus or circuit ground. So you're going to have a voltage drop across this resistor. Now it's not going to be much. And you know, we're not talking like 30 volts or anything like that. It's going to be around two to two to five volts or so. Uh, it depends on several factors. Now, one other thing the person asked about the, me doing this video. Uh, I went back and looked at his video again, on and this is the radio he's working on. Uh, when he started checking B plus, which showed a little low. The one fact, one thing I noticed was he had both SAMs and writers, and he was saying that the detector amp tube here should have a plate voltage of 30 volts, and that's what it was showing on SAMs, and he was getting around 20, I believe 22 to 23, maybe 24, somewhere in there. I can't remember now, but you look in the writers, it says it should be 24 volts. So you run into this also, that's another thing that you can run into, is the uh, different service information, even on the same make and model radio, but different companies can have different voltages. Now, riders generally get this information, the schematics and stuff right from the factory. Um, 
so I you know I would probably trust these voltages a little closer uh, Sam's reverse engineers usually and writes up their own schematic and I do know on some of them they actually do just a mathematical analysis to come up with the voltages sometimes they actually make a measurement uh, Sam's generally tells you and I'll read off uh, they, they tell you DC voltage measurements are at are at 20,000 ohms per volt AC voltage is measured at 1,000 ohms per volt so they're using a VOM uh, socket connections are shown from bottom view da, da, da. line voltage maintained at 117 volts nominal tolerance on component values make possible variations of plus or minus 10 percent on voltage and resistance readings so in other words Sam's is telling you that you know due to tolerances of all the various resistors everything in the circuit you know your voltages can be plus or minus 10 percent so um, and in general sense depending yeah you know you most of the time they're you they're they're talking VOM measurement voltages as opposed to um, like VTVM or or modern day digital meters and when you figure that factor in figure in the factor depending on what your line voltage is or if you're maintaining the actual line voltage that they're calling for and plus the tolerances and stuff I always tell people that generally if you're within plus or minus 20 percent you're probably okay uh, but uh, definitely if it's within 10 percent now but if you are if you do have a floating chassis and it's you know a radio or TV that is transformerless um, radios are called AC DC radios uh, but radios like these and the other schematic I showed remember your best results will be gotten when you find the B minus again uh, he restuffed the can so it was real easy to find that he could measure right from the outside of that can uh, but you can pick any number of spots to, to locate B minus uh, and get the uh, get your voltage and get your negative hooked up to that and then you can do you'll get the most accurate uh, B plus voltages for your plates and screens so I hope that I, I hope I explained that well enough and stuff but the main thing is is because of this resistor on these type of chassis now again there's another design where they went ahead and connected one side of this line directly to the chassis probably through the switch but it connected directly so it's a hot chassis in a case like that you don't have to worry about it and also remember some uh, radios don't even have the resistor they just have the capacitor in there in a case like that your voltage readings are going to be extremely low because you'll be the only thing you might be able to pick up will be um, a little bit of that ripple and you probably won't even pick that up but you probably you know if you're not getting no B plus at all and you tied to the chassis double check your schematic and stuff locate this B minus now this radio is a little difficult um, because of directly heated cathodes and stuff so it's kind of hard to follow out the the wiring and stuff and locate um, B minus anywhere else but at that filter cap it's really obvious there so there's where you tie it to so anyway that's about all I got to say on this uh, if you have any questions um, leave them in the comments I want to thank you all for your comments I know I haven't got back to even answering any of them it's been quite busy and stuff uh, also I'm going to be trying to get up a couple other videos besides this one and that all depends on how well this camera does uh, I am in the works of uh, trying to find an, another camera I'll probably end up just buying a new one as uh, depending on my funds uh, 
mainly, you know, used cameras, the bad thing about them, you don't know how long they're going to last, you know, how long, how much they've been used. So, anyway, that's about all I have on this. Um, so I, I hope that um, was kind of clear uh, and stuff. So I'm going to leave off on this here. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up um, and stuff. So I'll see you guys on the, on the next video. Have a good day.